Today, our learning objective focuses on multiplying by partitioning. But first, let's get your brain warmed up and ready to learn. Here are three questions for you to complete. Pause the video and have a go. How did you get on? Let's have a look at question one. Three multiplied by one is three. So three multiplied by 10 is 30. Three multiplied by two is six. So three multiplied by 20 is 60. Question one's focus is to identify the pattern of multiplying by ones and multiplying by multiples of 10. Three times three is nine ones. Three times three tens is nine tens. So three times 30 is 90. In question two, 23 can be partitioned. That means broken apart into 20 and three. And similarly, 34 can be partitioned into 30 and four. The two numbers have been partitioned into their tens and ones values. Question three shows different ways to make nine. Okay, now we're ready to learn. Here we are posed a question by Greg. We are told there are 18 trees in the orchard and that each tree has six apples on it. We need to work out the total number of apples. That means we need to calculate 18 multiplied by six. Greg has given us a great idea to help us solve the calculation. He says, let's partition 18 and then multiply to calculate the total. We can partition 18 into tens and ones values. His friends are showing us how. There are 10 trees in the orchard, each with six apples on it. And there are eight trees in the orchard, each with six apples on it. Let's have a look at our calculation. 18 multiplied by six. Well, here are six ones and I need 18 lots of them. Oh, Greg wants to remind us that multiplication is commutative. Finding 18 lots of six this way could take me a very long time. Instead, I could find six lots of 18. Let's see what this looks like on a place value grid. 18 is a two digit number, so the grid has tens and ones. I'm multiplying by six, so I'm going to need six rows of 18. We have partitioned 18 into tens and ones. We can show this in a part whole model. We have 10 multiplied by six in the tens column and eight multiplied by six in the ones column. Let's start with our smallest value the ones. When we are multiplying, we always start with our smallest place value. Eight ones multiplied by six is equal to 48. We can see there are 48 ones in the place value table. Now let's multiply the tens value. 10 multiplied by six is equal to 60. And looking at our place value table, we can see there are six tens in the table. So all together, we add 60 and 48 to give a total of 108. 18 multiplied by six is 108. Let's have a look at another example. 23 multiplied by four. There are four lots of 23. Let's take a look at what this looks like on a place value grid. Again, 23 is partitioned into tens and ones. We can represent this on the part whole model. 23 multiplied by four is broken into 20 multiplied by four and three multiplied by four. We're partition number into the tens and ones. When we multiply, we begin by multiplying the smallest value first. Well, here the smallest value is the ones. So three times four is equal to 12. 
and then 20 multiplied by 4 is 80. In total, 23 multiplied by 4 is 92. Have a look at the place value grid. I see something interesting about the tens and ones. We have just calculated that 23 multiplied by 4 is equal to 92, but I don't see 9 tens. I only see 8. Can you think why that might be the case? Let's look at the ones. How many are there on the table? There are 12. We know from place value that we can only have up to 9 in the ones place. So we need to exchange 10 of those ones for a 10. Hence, we have 92. There's nine tens and two ones. Here's an example for you to have a go at. Can you use a place value grid and a part whole model to calculate 34 multiplied by three? Pause the video now and give it a go. How did you do? Here we are multiplying by three. So I know I'm going to need three rows on my place value table. When I partition 34 into tens and ones values, I get three tens and four ones. Here you can see it represented with the base 10 equipment. There will be three rows of 34. Our part whole model shows 34 partitioned into 30 multiplied by three and four multiplied by three. Starting with our ones, four times three is 12 and three times 30 is equal to 90. 90 and 12 gives us 102 altogether. So 34 multiplied by three is equal to 102. Greg has been busy doing some multiplication calculations. Can you find which of Greg's calculations are correct and which need fixing? Pause the video now and have a think. Okay, let's find out how you got on. In our first example, Greg was trying to calculate 32 multiplied by 6, but he has multiplied 6 by 3 and 6 by 20, which would mean that Greg has calculated 23 multiplied by 6. So, sorry Greg, but this was incorrect. Now it's fixed. In our second example, Greg is correct. He has partitioned 42 into 40 and 2. And all of his other calculations are correct there. Well done, Greg. So what about the final example? Here, Greg has partitioned 54 correctly into 50 and 4. But did you notice his calculation error? We know that 5 multiplied by 5 is 25, so 5 multiplied by 50 is 250, not 200. Let's fix it. Here Greg is challenging us to solve a problem. If 57 P5 children each paid £6 and 43 adults paid £8 to go to the cinema, how much did they spend in total? I can see this problem is going to take more than one calculation. I will have to separately calculate how much the children spent and how much the adults spent. My part whole models show the multiplication calculations needed. The first part whole model shows us the calculation needed to find out how much the children spent. 57 multiplied by 6 has been partitioned into its tens and ones. 50 multiplied by 6 and 7 multiplied by 6. 7 multiplied by 6 is 42 and 50 times 6 is 300. The second part whole model shows us the calculation needed to find out how much the adults spent. 43 times 8 is partitioned into its tens and ones. 40 multiplied by 8 and 3 times 8. 
always start with the ones value or the smallest value. 3 times 8 is 24. 40 times 8 is 320. So we can say altogether 57 times 6 is 342 and 43 times 8 is 344. <gasps> but We've not answered Greg's challenge yet. He wants to know how much did they spend in total. To solve that, we must add 342 and 344. Together, they spent £686 in total. That finishes today's tutorial. Multiplying using this method of partitioning will help you estimate calculations. So when we move on to more complicated calculations using written method, you'll be able to identify errors more easily. Just the way we spotted Greg's mistakes. Get more practice now by completing your independent task. Thank you for watching and good luck.